Hey everyone, I am back. Spent a lot of my work energy on uh, doing overtime at my regular job, but uh, that's hopefully over with now. Uh, we're back to doing some fun stuff, some fun hobby, and I'm finally going to be able to show you how I painted the Skaven Cannon Crawler I built not too long ago. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Skaven were the first Warhammer army I played back when a friend got me into this hobby almost 25 years ago. And I quickly fell in love with these weird little rats and their weird little rules. I've decided to paint mine red and uh, off-white, as that is what the Games Workshop Clan Scryer Skaven Army was painted at the time. But of course, you can't just paint Skaven off-white. You can't just paint them red. They've got to be weathered up a little bit. And so for this cannon crawler, the first colors that I had to put down were rusty brown and some metal to go underneath the white here. Now, I used an airbrush to put the brown on, and I also used the airbrush to put some chipping medium on that we're going to use to add a bit of weathering to this once we've finished highlighting up the white a little bit. Uh, for the white here, I'm just using deck tan and pale sand and then grabbing a stiff brush and getting that wet and using that to reactivate the chipping medium and carefully take off some paint in a few strategic areas where there might be some battle damage that would have chipped the paint. When painting a larger machine like this, it's nice to be able to go through and use some techniques that'll get you good results without a ton of extra effort. And chipping medium is one of those things that just makes it really easy to add all kinds of nice little dings and dents and scratches and things in the paint on a larger war machine, like this cannon crawler. But of course, that's not enough on its own, and I am a madman and like to lee a little bit extra, so I grabbed some of the highlight color I'd used for the armor, and just kind of dabbed it here and there, near where some of the larger dents and chips in the paint were. This gives the appearance of depth to the paint, and really helps those cracked areas pop out. I also wanted to add some rust to the metallic elements on the, uh, the machine, so orange paint it was, and just kind of dab that on. I'll do a bit of a rust wash later, but for the areas the heaviest rust, I'll use the orange paint to give a deeper rust effect. Not a ton of extra work, just, you know, dab it on here and there, hit some of the larger scratches with some orange paint, I had to try really hard with this step to be kinda random. One of the enemies of something looking natural is uniformity. Two of something will look unnatural. Three? Eh, not so much. As long as they're not evenly spaced. Once the, uh, the base weathering was done, I wanted to get some more base coats on before I hit this whole thing with a wash. And so for the sort of metallic trim areas, I knew I was going to want to end up with those being kind of bronzy or brassy. And so I used a, a dark sort of brown metal base coat for those, and then hit them with an all-over dry brush of brass paint. It was important to get this step done before I'd gotten too far into the weathering, so I'd be able to touch up any mistakes. It is, however, better to not need to touch up mistakes, so go a little slowly, be careful with the trim, and you won't hit the white and make really obvious mistakes that you're going to need to fix. The little power cables, uh, mostly I just went with gray for these. I don't want them to be too noticeable, and on the last Warp Lightning Cannon I did, I painted these red, so I wanted a little bit of contrast and difference between the two. I don't want these cannons to look the same red robes for the little Skaven guys to match up with the rest of my Skaven army, and because giving them white robes would help them blend too much into the cannon. I really want contrast with the crew so that they'll stand out against the larger machine. Since the airbrushed base color on this whole model was already brown, I tried pretty hard not to get any of this uh, flesh colored paint or red paint or any other colors onto the areas that I knew I was just going to leave brown for fur anyways. Then it was onto the big wash stage, and fortunately, this machine has a nice, large, flat metallic area on the bottom of the sort of cabin that I could use to test my washes. My initial efforts were too dark, a little too much wash, not enough water, 
so I mixed in a little bit more and kept going, slapping this stuff over the entire miniature. During this step, it was important not to be too messy with it because there's still chipping medium under there, and I don't want to reactivate that and do more chipping. So it had to be a little bit of a light touch with the wash. Then grab my dry brush and a lighter metallic paint just to bring some quick and easy highlights back into the metal, bring back some of that shine on both the silver metallics and the brass metallics. Dry brushing is a great technique for metals especially because the little mica flakes in the metallic paints add a lot of variation and difference and help hide the sort of powdery nature that a dry brush can often give. Metallics generally won't look powdery. For all these little pistons on the undercarriage of the crawler, I knew that I wanted to have some sort of oil so it looked like the pistons actually moved and were used. And I did that with a little bit of sepia mixed with a little bit of flesh wash for a nice gross organic feel to them. From there it was just a matter of going back and bringing in some highlights to help brighten things up where the wash had dulled them down. Remember, I hit the entire miniature with that brown wash. So places like the red robes and the Skaven's uh, skin really do need some highlights to be able to help bring them back out. The robes actually got two levels of highlights. I think this was one of the very few areas on the miniature where I did more than one round of highlights to them. But with red robes, the extra light highlight really adds a lot of character to them. From there, you thought the weathering was done? Fools! Time for the rust wash. Hit all the little rusty areas with that. Again, trying to be variable. Running some nasty streaks down with, uh, with both that and brown wash. And then, oop, almost forgot. Need to do a quick dry brush of off-white over those little wooden panels that that one guy is standing on. Normally would have done those a little bit earlier, but uh, unfortunately kind of forgot. And so I had to be careful not to mess up work that I'd already done. As with the other cannon I did, and my screaming bell, which I suppose I'll show you someday, I want the crew to have a bit more contrast than the machine they're working on. So, more highlights for them. So I've switched from regular heavy green to heavy black green as the base coat, but everything else but the way I paint warp stone is exactly the same as the last time I showed how I paint warp stone, and rather than showing it all again, I will just drop you a link right here. And the same goes for lenses. I covered those in that video as well, so again, just showing the bare minimum here. Just how it goes, isn't it? You do all that work and then... Basing rears its ugly head. Now, the Warp Lightning Cannon has a bit of a larger base to fill, so I wanted to have a little bit of fun with it. Scrounged up some bits out of my bits box, filed down the front of a Skaven body, and built a little dead rat for the crawler to be stepping on. I even found a little ratty tail to fit on there for him. One dead rat, done. So here we are, everything on the base primed. And there is everything. He's coated. Didn't really show those steps because there wasn't a whole lot to them. Then I mixed up a good old batch of Papa Destro's genuine homemade old fashioned texture paste and set about slathering that all over the whole base. For this particular one, I went a little bit heavier on the, uh, the rubble and stone in there. And then, of course, once that was dry, just came in and slathered some more wash all over it to make it nice and dark. Eh. Hit the uh, the rat and everything else on the base while I was at it. I didn't want to uh, to worry too hard about making those highlighted, but I did give a little bit of attention extra to the uh, the little dead rat. And of course, we need to add some rust to the stuff on the base if we've got rust on the the uh, machine itself. So busted out the orange paint again and just went at it with this little cut down brush until everything had a nice coating of rust. Final step was to slap a bit of fresh mud onto the feet of the walker so that it would look like it had been clomping around a little bit. And there we have it, that's it, that's the walker done and painted. This project did take me a little while to get through, uh, real life got in the way, but I managed to finish it eventually, I've brought it to you guys here, and I hope you've really enjoyed seeing the process of me going through this kit bash from start to finish 
with uh, nothing more than an idea and bringing it to this finished model that I can put on the tabletop and be proud of. Kit bashing is a lot of fun and I hope I've inspired some of you to go out and do some Skaven kit bashes of your own. With that, that's it for me. I've been Destro, you've been great, and I'll see you next time.